One, zero, one, Bravo, Lima. Come in, over. One, zero, one, Bravo, Lima. I can't have you sitting in the middle of my runway, hoss. Respond, over. This is Buck Kendall trying you again. One, zero, one, Bravo, Lima. You gotta move it, and I mean now, not later. Why do all the weird ones have to fly at night? Okay. You don't wanna move? Move you myself. Okay, Hoss, let's roll it off on the grass. Curtains. Hey! Hey! Hey, buddy! Buddy! You... in there, friend? Good Lord. What happened in here? Shouldn't be shooting up on heroin anyway. It'll mess up her back no, end. Look, front eluded, back eluded, side eluded. Shit, you same as enough with that, whatever you got. You damn right, what time? Where's my picture? Where's my goddamn dead baby? I told you before, Libby, do not fuck with my stuff. And I told you before, Dees, don't fuck with me. Morrison cut your goddamn dead baby. You got a problem with that hotshot? Take it up with him. tell you what inside you is, Miss Blair. It's a microscope. A cultural microscope. Focusing in on the collective unconscious of the American populace. Now, what we do here at Inside View, Catherine, is identify and define the cultural archetype of the American mind. 
Now, read that list back to me. The stories I want you looking for. Um, alien abductions. Amusing animal stories. Attacks on the handicapped. Only if it has a twist. Some kind of kinky sex in there or something. Battered wives. Bizarre body functions. Breast surgery horror stories. That's always good. C. Celebrities. Addicted. Perverted. Dying. Dead. And of course, back from the dead. Um, demonic possession. Listen, Merton. Just because you don't have any balls doesn't mean you can cut mine off. Morning, Richard. Do you know what I had to do with that morgue attendant to get that picture? Do you have any idea how cold those slabs are? Catherine, this emotionally unstable individual is Richard Deese, our senior reporter. Catherine Blair. All right. It's very nice to meet you. Yeah. Did he spout off about all that collective unconsciousness crap yet? Catherine, we'll finish this later. Sure, no problem. Thank you, Mr. Morrison, for everything. I won't let you down. Welcome to Inside View, Catherine. Thanks. It's nice meeting you. Yeah. What about my picture? These, we all love your pictures. But in the future, just as a rough guideline, let's keep the victims over two years old, OK? Now, sit down. Please, I got to show you something. Sorry, Mr. Morrison, I forgot my purse. Thank you. So, what do you think of Catherine? Another Jimmy Olsen. She doesn't have much experience, but she's sharp. Good instincts. Great ass. Did you happen to mention to her why the position opened up? Of course I didn't. I wanted to hire her, not scare her away. There's no reason she needs to know anything about Dottie. Anyway, look, there's your next assignment. What are you talking about? I thought I was doing Nina Briggs. Well, she's down to 75 pounds. She won't be around for long. She can stay or go. Who cares? A country star with AIDS? That's way too soft a story for you. Besides, this is much more up your alley. This is going to be a big one, Richard. Really big. Uh-huh. A lot of people are going to want to read about this guy. There's nothing here. <laughs> a man. No. A man who thinks he's more than a man. Flies into desolate airports in the middle of the night, kills whatever poor schmuck happens to be around, drains the body of the blood. Then he flies away again in search of his next unsuspecting victim. And he calls himself Dwight Renfield. No, Dwight just happens to be the first name of an actor named Dwight Fry, who played the role of Renfield, the uh, bug-eating lunatic in the 1931 version of Dracula. Come on, Richard, that's not a story. The guy's a movie fan, so what? Vampires are a dime a dozen in the tabs. You know that. Besides, the next time the psycho goes out, they're going to nail him. Yeah, why is that? They've got the make of his plane and the tail number. Now, if you wanted to rob banks, would you do it with the same car with the same license plate every single time? No one's caught him yet. Look, put that pilot license and plane of yours to some use. Besides, you're good with the hicks. You're the best. Thank you. You need this one, Richard. Take my word on it. Your work has been a little lacking lately. Come on, you haven't hit the front pages in months. And this, this is front page material. This is a waste of space, is what it is. It's a waste of my time. I'm still gonna run it, you know, with or without you. And it's gonna be a screamer, guarantee it. Why don't you give it to Jimmy? Something nice and juicy for her to sink her teeth into. Fucking prick.
Mr. Dees. Hi. I'm Catherine Blair. We met this morning in Mr. Morrison's office. You remember me? I remember you, Jimmy. Well, Jimmy. As in Olsen. <laughs> <laughs> you mind if I join you? Do I have a choice? Nope. Boy, what an exciting first day this turned out to be. I already got my first assignment, a piece about a psycho pilot who thinks he's a vampire. <laughs> of all huh, things. Yeah, I know, I already pissed on him. I, mean, I passed on it. Why are you here, Jimmy? I doubt that you followed me all this way just to shoot the shit. Well, I didn't follow you. I, I was just... It doesn't matter. You're here now, what do you want? Well, okay. I guess I was hoping that you could give me the inside view of inside view. Who better to learn from than the paper's star reporter? Maybe you could share your philosophy with me. My philosophy? Your secret for staying on top for so long. I'd love to hear it. That is, if you have one. Uh, okay. Here it is, you better take notes. Never believe what you publish. I never publish what you believe. What's the matter? I talk too fast? Well, I guess I was just expecting something more from someone who, who thinks of himself as a... As a what? Well, a real reporter. Huh. Huh. <laughs> hmm. Let me ask you a question. What the fuck do you think you know about being a real reporter, huh? God damn it! I'm, so I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Why don't we start over? Why? I gotta know your story, honey. I heard it a million times. You come from Lockport or Rockport or Bridgeport or Eugene, Oregon or some goddamn place. You tried to get into Columbia or Yale. You ended up at Illinois State, didn't you? Then you interned for... The examiner, the, the the Patriot, what? Help me here, please. The Herald. Herald, exactly. That's right. You covered everything from cake sales to dog shows to class reunions, but that got a little mundane for you, didn't it? She came to us for just a little more spice. Of course, the money. Stop me if I'm wrong here. What are you getting at, Mr. Dees? You've been here before, Jimmy. And you'll be here again. See, the face has changed, but the end is always the same. Won't last. Maybe I'll surprise you. Maybe it will. Maybe you'll stick around for a while. End up just like Dottie. What are you talking about? You want my inside view of inside view? All right, I'll give it to you. And it ain't about no fucking philosophy, honey, believe me. Inside view is an illustration of the insane. It's a diary of the deranged and dangerously sick. I'm talking about kindergarten teachers setting fire to their students because they think these five-year-olds are plotting their executions. Satanic biker cults slaughtering hitchhikers just for the hell of it, but here's the fun part. After talking to these crazy people all day, every single day, sometimes their stories can get to you. Creeping like some kind of fucking cancer, and pretty soon, all this shit starts making sense. That's what happened to Dottie Walsh. Real go-getter just like you. She started to believe in the unbelievable. Not more than a year after Dottie was hired, she was dead. Went home one night and took a bath with a dry cleaning bag wrapped around her head. Bye-bye, Dottie. For a killer headline, though. <laughs> I'm sorry I bothered you. That's okay. I thought maybe we could be friends, but, uh... Yeah, well... I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Jimmy, listen to me now. I don't have friends. I've got my camera, my plane, and my stories. That's all I want. That's all I need. So if you want a friend, buy a dog. <laughs> or 
our feelings. And what's so goddamn important? Our uh, batty friend has struck again. Is that so? Last night, Duffery, Maryland, a little pissant town, sixty miles outside of Washington, got clean away too. Oh, you shouldn't let it bother you, Richard. After all, this is a young man's business, or young woman's. <laughs> That's right. Catherine found it. Somehow she tapped into a network of local law enforcement agencies with that computer of hers. Searched through a hundred murder wires to find one that fit our bad boy's M.O. Had the information waiting for me on my desk as soon as I walked in the door. Now that is ambition. Give me the file. What do you want me to say? That I was wrong? Just that you might have been wrong? I mean, that would do, I guess. You know what a pussycat I am. Okay, I might have been wrong. You happy now? How very large-hearted of you to admit it. First this guy, Claire Bowie, up in Maine. Then Buck Kendall in New York. And now Ray and Ellen Sarch in Maryland. There's definitely a story here that needs to be told. 
and I think I hear Dwight calling your name, Richard. Anybody from the straight press pick up on this yet? If you're asking if anyone's suggesting that there's a serial killer flying around out there, the answer is no. But the FAA and cops are trying to keep this thing hush-hush. It won't be long. Here they are, Mr. Morrison. Good, 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 good. But we need to know which one to run. We've got to press in 20 minutes. Yeah. What's that? Uh, uh, it's tomorrow's edition. If you want it to be, that is. So, what's it gonna be? You son of a bitch. <laughs> is that a yes? Right. What's that plan B? Is in Blair? Not important. Listen, I want to run this guy's back trail, starting with the first murder we know about, Bowie up in Maine, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about your Nina Briggs story? Fuck Nina Briggs. No, <laughs> not me. Oh, there is one small problem, Richard. Uh, Catherine, I, I'm afraid I have some bad news. The story's mine, Mr. Morrison. You gave it to me. Well, it looks like he's taking it back. Catherine, I apologize about this, but Dees is back on the story. Now give him your files, if you would. Mr. Morrison, if I could yes, just... Please, I've made my decision. Just do it. Thank you, dear. I, I suppose you want this, too? I have my own plane. Thanks. How you doing, friend? Don't believe I know you, mister. My name's Richard Dees. I'm reporters. I wonder if I could talk to you for a minute. Ezra Hanna. Mr. Hanna. Fix things around here. Work the planes. What paper you say you're from? Inside View. You know it? <laughs> oh, yeah. My wife, Martha, reads your paper. Uh-huh. After she's done with it, I use it to line our kitty's toilet box. Soaks up that cat piss real good. <laughs> <laughs> then you won't mind answering a few questions. You want to talk to me about the killing of my friend Claire Boy, don't you? Now, how did you know that? It ain't no other reason city folks visit these parts, except something bad happens, and this was real bad. But I got to tell you, I already told everything I know to the Falmouth police. Yeah, but see, I'm not the police. This will only take a few minutes, so if you don't mind. Well, I suppose that'd be all right. We'll just speak loud and clearly, and you tell me what happened the night that Claire Bowie was murdered. It all began the night before Claire was murdered. The night that bastard flew in here. Now, that plane was a black Cessna Skymaster, right? 337 was red piping, tail number 101 Bravo Lima. It was one of them Skymasters, all right. At least I think it was. I can't say as I remember the tail number, because I don't. Ain't that the damnedest thing? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. You just go on ahead now. Well, the night shift belonged to Claire. Quiet most time, but not that night. No, oh, sir. Not that night.
my shift was over and I was loading up to head home. That's when he came down. Let me tell you, mister. Right from the get-go, that fella didn't seem proper. Just sort of off. Why was that? He was wearing a big cloak. He was. Red as a fire engine inside. Black as a woodchuck's asshole outside. And when it spread out behind him, it looked like a goddamn bat's wing, it did. Come to work about seven that next morning. Headed to chat with Claire before he went home, like I always did. Morning! Claire? But I gotta tell you, Claire seemed a bit odd that day. Not quite himself. Is this some sort of new service, Claire? Claire? Just doing my part is all. Saw you had a night fly last night. This him? Yeah. Uh, Dwight Renfield. Flew in from Derry. Nice fellow. Different. Said he was leaving tonight. Said he'd stop back to say goodbye. Looked like he came back all right. Can't imagine it being anyone else. <laughs> back and rip my friend's throat clean out from his neck. I left him dead as dirt in winter. Ugly way to die. So the plane was there the whole day? Yeah. Did Claire happen to mention calling a cab for the pilot to take her to the motel? It doesn't seem to be anything with an easy walking distance. No. I don't remember Claire saying Ari a word about calling a fella a cab. What about a limo? Didn't say nothing about no limbo, neither. And he would have mentioned that. Check taxi limousine services. Seen one more thing, too. Might not mean nothing, but uh, then again, it might. Struck me peculiar. So give. Seen something strange under that plane. I did. Tell me. Big pile of dirt right under the luggage bay it was. Nasty stuff. Like where something had died. You're going after him, ain't you? You best be careful, Hoss. This fella who killed old Claire, he ain't no man. Thanks for your input.
<laughs> Not scary enough, Claire. I didn't, but I think the guy who did just ran that way. I don't know who you are or what you want. We respect the dead around here, mister. And I suggest you do the same. You might be joining old Claire sooner than you think. Really? <laughs> Thanks for the advice, Tiger. You're real credit to humanity. You'll get yours, you son of a bitch! Already got it. Drink some more of that shit. Been that kid from the cemetery and his boozed up buddies exercising their First Amendment rights on my motel room window, fucking Hicks. It's gonna take a lot more than that to scare me off. Anyway, I checked out Ezra Hannon's story with the Falmouth police. They basically backed up everything the old Jinhead had to say. And they called the Derry Airport where this nut bar supposedly flew out of, and they never heard of a Dwight Renfield or a black Cessna Skymaster with that tail number. So where the hell did he come from? And why didn't Claire Bowie question his missing flight plan? And these little hick airfields are always used by drug runners to transport their shit. That the FAA found out that Claire Bowie let Mr. Renfield in so easily that shut him down faster than you can say bumfuck County, Maine. But I guess Claire didn't have to worry about that now. Alderton, New York is next. See what other mischief our Cape Crusader got himself into. You may not know it yet, Dwight, but you're gonna be my one-way ticket back to the front page.
You're a very generous man, Mr. Hughes. Uh, only when I have to be. Must have been a mighty man got Buck Handel. Guy must have got him from behind you, only way I can figure it. Why do you say that? Well, old Buck dressed out right around 220. And an easy man most of the time, God-fearing Christian. But if you did get him riled, now he made you sorry. And you got here right in time. I was just about to sew him up. Damn that clue. I hope that doesn't happen during a wake. Is what you wanted to see? No. That is. Kept on washing that damn plane. So I said, saw you had a night flyer last night. This him? So I said, saw you had a night flyer. Night flyer. Steve. Where are you, Richard? Alderton, New York. Oh, Buck Kendall territory. Yeah. Got my picture of the Night Flyer's second victim. Up close, personal, and dead. Don't worry, of age. I checked his ID. We're calling him the Night Flyer now. Not bad. Yeah, well, I gotta tell you, Mr. Renfield is not your typical count. How's that? There were two big wounds on Buck Kendall's neck, and I'm not talking little Bella Lugosi bite marks. I'm talking about massive holes. This guy's either got teeth the size of Bigfoot or he's run railroad spikes into their necks. This is great shit. I mean, the fatties in the supermarket lines are gonna love this guy. God, I hope he kills more people. Look, fax me your copy. Send the pictures. Let's get going on this. Keep it in your pants, Mark. It's not ready yet. It's gonna get bigger. It's gonna get weirder. I can feel it. Well, send me whatever the hell you got then. For Christ's sake, Richard, you already ran the teaser on this. You know that. Come on! God damn it, it's not gonna be ready for next week. You got that? You'll get your story when I decide it's time to give it to you. In the meantime, stay the fuck out of my face. I'm going to Dufford tomorrow. I'll call you when I think I have something. Later. Idiot. Working late, Kat. Uh, I was trying to hit that deadline, boss. Psychic dogs and stars piece is really tough. We're calling him the Night Flyer now, by the way. I'm sorry, Mr. Morrison. I just couldn't let it go. I'm not asking you to, but I'll tell you something. You're not going to find all the answers in this electronic box of yours. They're out there. Do you want this story back, Catherine? You know I do. Then tape that ticket of yours back together. Dees does not run this paper. I do. Bring me the night flyer. The byline's yours. But I'll tell you something. If you want to beat Dees, you got to play the game like Dees.
to stay. Long, pal. We got enough problems here. I said, move it along, bud. Get your hands off me, pal. I'm the fucking press. Just don't get in the way, all right? Buck Kendall was a one-night stand for you. You flew in shortly after 12 o'clock on the 23rd, spiked old Buck dead, and then took off again into the unfriendly skies. That's not the norm for you, is it, pal? You like to linger. Why? Maybe most times you wait around until you're really hungry, but poor old Buck was just a midnight snack. You've been getting under my skin, fella. Doesn't look like this story's about to let me go, but that's okay, because I'm not letting go either. It's funny, when you give blood, the most you can expect is a cup of orange juice. But when you take blood, you get headlines. Sick fucker. Test, if you please. Listen, pal, I'm looking for the Duffery Airport. Can you tell me how to get there? Sure, I could. I ain't gonna do you no good. The place is closed up. Yeah, I know. I tried to land there this morning. I had to land at Washington National instead. Then you must know about the Sarshes. Actually, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to find out more about what happened. You a cop or something? Something like that. So you knew the Sarches? Hell yeah, I knew them. I actually saw Ray and his wife the day they were murdered. Yeah, they stopped in here on the way home that afternoon. I could tell right away there was something wrong with them. What do you mean? Well, Ray looked all tired and pale, like he was sick or something. But Ellen, she was looking fine. I almost didn't recognize her. Let's go, Ray. Honey, he's waiting for us. Salida done Ellen up real good. Who? Salida McCammon. She works over in town at the beauty bar. Now that's somebody you should be talking to. She can pass along some mighty strange stories she has. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Just the fact that Ellen's visits were usually as regular as clockwork, and this time she came in at least two weeks early. Now, that might not mean anything to you, but for Ellen Sarge to break a routine she'd been following for the last 20 years, it was downright odd. How did Ellen seem to you? Mm, dreamy, somehow. Like a schoolgirl with a crush. 62 years old or not, 
Her color was so high, I thought it was makeup. Will it be the usual L? No. Something different this time. A perm, I think. And maybe a little bit of color, too. And as I worked on her, Ellen told me about that pilot who flew in the night before. I knew they'd never met him. But by the way she was talking, it was like he was a long-lost friend. Ray and Ellen welcomed him with open arms into their home. They even had dinner, actually watched a little television. The next morning, Ellen came to see me. She wanted to look sensuous. She wanted to look beautiful. <laughs> she wanted to look young. Salita, could you look this way, please? Thanks, son. When you FBI boys find a son of a bitch, Agent D's, give him a swift kick in the teeth for me. Ray and Ellen were good people. Tell me about the murders. Tell me about what you found at the trailer. Nothing looked out of ordinary at first, till we stepped inside. Right away, we knew something was wrong. It was the smell. Found Ray first, sprawled out at her feet. Hardly any blood on him at all. Something else was missing, too. What's that? His head. He was sitting over in the far corner of the room, staring toward the open doorway, as if there was actually something there to see. Never seen nothing like that in my life. An FAA warning for this guy was posted there on the wall. And he was there all night and all the next day. And still, they didn't blow the whistle on him. Just makes no sense. still see her now. She was lying there, pale as snow. Every drop of her blood gone, too. But God damn if she didn't look at peace. Almost happy, like it was what she wanted. Were there any strange puncture marks in the bodies, the holes? Oh, there were holes, all right. Holes big enough you could siphon from. Which is what we figured he did. How he didn't splash blood all over the room is anybody's guess. What kind of fucking game is this animal playing? I wish somebody would tell me that. Nice puppy. It's a good boy. Fucking believe this shit.
Blood stops here, Merton, until Dwight spikes again. The trail's cold. Anything new in Duffrey? Richard, you still there? No, it's more of the same. I'll tell you something, though. This maniac definitely has an influence over these people. I mean, a lot of serial killers can charm their victims, but this guy's got it in spades. Did you pack your garlic? Yeah. We're right next to my crucifix. It's time to hit the phones. I need to find that goddamn plane. If anything comes over the wires, you give me a call. I'm staying at the Falling Star Motel. You got it. When hell freezes over. Sorry to keep you holding, Catherine. What were you saying? I just don't feel too comfortable bribing police officers, Mr. Morrison. It just takes a little practice. You'll get the hang of it. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, listen, where are you staying in case I need to get a hold of you? The Falling Star Motel, room 134. Yeah? I hear it's a pretty nice place. Good luck, Catherine. Thanks. God, I love this job. <laughs> Excuse me. Hard day? Hard life. Next, Dwight. What's this shit? Your friend at the end of the bar ordered it for you. That's funny. <laughs> he was just there a second ago. He's like all just up for Halloween or something. What did he say? Just to bring you the drink is all. Where'd he go? I, I don't know. Oh my God. Pete. What the fuck are you doing here? Taking back my story. Morrison put you up to this? I don't see what that has to do with anything. You know, he just sent you down here to piss me off. He's just fucking with you. I don't believe you. I don't give a fuck what you believe. Why don't you go on home before you really make me mad? I don't need some bitch cub reporter screwing up my leads. I don't need your leads, Dees. I have my own. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I have a complete set of police reports from the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department. I tracked down a very cooperative clerk from the FAA offices in Washington. And I have all three sets of autopsy photos. Like I said, I'm taking the story home. No. You're just playing catch-up. What are you gonna do next? I have my ideas. Where are you going? Just wait. We're talking here. Jimmy, why don't we cut this competition bullshit? You want me to tell you the truth? I'm dry. So are you. Right? 
tell you something, though. Dwight was here. He just left. He's flying right this minute. He's gonna have to come down sooner or later. Now, he's been very lucky three times already. How many more times do you think that's gonna happen? Before this story breaks wide open and we lose him for good. Yeah. So what's your point? My point is this. We gotta get a lead on this guy, and we gotta get one soon, otherwise we're fucked. Now, two people can do that kind of grunt work a lot faster than one. So what I'm gonna do this is the best deal you've had all day. If you work with me on this, I'll share my byline. <laughs> <laughs> How very generous of you. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. I do. <laughs> it's as good as it gets, baby. Because the truth is, if it comes down to just me or just you, it's gonna be me. So what do you think? Yeah, that's what I need to know from you. It's, it's 101 Bravo Lima. Hi. Okay, thanks. For nothing. Hey, please call me if you see her. Okay, bye. Yes, I know there's a fucking FAA warning posted in every fucking airport between here and Knipsey. What I asked you was if you saw the fucking thing. Yes, I'll hold it. No, I won't hold. His name is Dwight Renfield. Jesus, yes! Renfield. Dwight... Renfield! Dwight Renfield, are you deaf? Bastard. Bitch. Anything? No. You? Hell no. What about that? He's not gonna hit Wilmington, it's way too big. Hi, Bill. This is Merton Morrison with the FAA. I was wondering if you could help me out with something here. Absolutely, Mr. Morrison. Always interested in helping the FAA in any way possible. What can I do for you? We're calling all the coastal airfields looking for an aircraft we believe is involved in some illegal activity. Now, this particular plane is a Cessna Skymaster 337. We have lots of those. Very reliable. Well, see, this is a black Skymaster 337 with red piping, tail number 101 Bravo Lima. Have you seen the plane, Bill? Sir, have you seen this plane? Sir? No. He was lying. Yeah, he was. Now what? Now we get our asses to Wilmington. It's time to bag this prick. Go pack. Be back in two minutes. Hey, ah! too easy. Jeez, what are you doing? Let me go. Jeez. Jeez, open this door. Jeez. Jeez, open this door. What are you?
Thanks for your help, Jimmy. But I don't share my byline. And I'm not sharing the night flyer either. He's all mine. Open this goddamn door right now! Dees! What did you tell me, Dees? These stories can get to you. They can creep inside like some kind of cancer. Isn't that what you warned me about? Isn't that what you said happened to Dottie Walsh? Sorry, Jimmy, you lose. I'll see you on the front page. Look out, ladies and sensation seekers. A very bad man is coming your way. You'll read his real name and forget it, but that's okay, because what you'll remember is my name for him. A name that's gonna put him right up there with Jack the Ripper and the Cleveland Torso Murder and the Black Dahlia. You're gonna remember the Night Flyer. Coming soon to a checkout counter near you. This will be a vector for ILS runway 34, fly heading 160, descend and maintain 3000. Roger, fly heading 160, leaving 6 for 3000, 70 Delta Romeo. Be aware that we got some nasty weather down here, Hoss. Wilmington, this is 70 Delta Romeo. You got a Skymaster 337 down there on the ramp. Tail number 101, Bravo Lima. Wilmington, this is 70 Delta Romeo. Did you get my last transmission? <laughs> God damn it, Wilmington, talk to me. What's going on down there? Asshole, I'm not letting you go.
like. You in there, buddy?
I've been watching you, Dees. I've been watching you very closely. Yes, I know you, you see. I know all about you. I trust you now understand that you can never write of what you know. Can never reveal what you have seen. Open your camera now. You real? <laughs> so are you. For now, at least. This is your last chance, my would-be biographer. Open your camera, or I'll do it. Your appetite for blood intrigues me. We have a lot in common, you and I. Hmm. Perhaps you need me, Dees. But there are others who need me as well. <coughs> Don't fear for your life, Dees. I have no intention of killing you. After all, we are brothers in blood, are we not? This sad world would be a much sadder place without the likes of you. Besides, I have fed well tonight. Mm. Oh, so very well. But listen closely, my inquisitive friend, because I say this only once. Do not follow me anymore, or I will swallow you whole. That much. <laughs> I promise. Show it to me. I suppose it was inevitable. You've been looking for me all your life. In the morgues, in the graveyards, in the faces of the dead and dying. Your whole existence has been a search for me. Well, here I am, my friend. Am I not all that you'd hoped for? Am I not all that you thought I would be?
do to get this, Richard? I had to pull it out of me. It was so cold, Richard. So cold. Richard, could you look this way? Inside view. Please, just keep your distance.
never believe what you publish. Never publish what you believe. this guy. His name is Richard Dees. We call him the Night Flyer. Sorry, Dees. You lose.